Hello, everyone, and welcome to Remnant Fellowship. I'm Josue Rodriguez, and I'm glad you're joining me. We're going to continue our study today on um, the four horsemen, two beasts, one world system, rise of the Antichrist, part two. We started a couple weeks ago with this study, and we were discussing, we started with 1 John, the letter of 1 John, and how he was warning us that the time would come that there would be an Antichrist, and he used the phrase, the Antichrist. But he also warned us that there are many Antichrists already in the world, and this is how we actually know that it's the last hour. And it's interesting because, you know, as Christians, we, most Christians, believe in a young earth, which means that the earth is only about 6,000 years old. And so when you think about it, when you look at that God created the heavens and the earth, he created everything within six days and then he rested on the seventh. Well, we also believe, most Christians believe, that from the time of, of the garden to the time of Jesus was roughly 4,000 years and from the time of Jesus till today is 2,000 years. And so we're almost, we're, we're creeping up on that 1,000 years that the Bible considers a time of rest. It's ca actually called the millennial kingdom. And we read that in the book of Revelation and, and other places in the prophets and in Daniel, Zechariah. And we can, we'll take a look at that later on in a few weeks. But where, you know, humanity is, is creeping and pushing towards this 1,000 year millennial reign. And this study of the rise of the Antichrist is very important because the world is looking for a leader. There's, we look at the United States, we have no leader. I just saw another video of our uh, commander in chief tripping and falling. And, you know, it's just, it's just a complete mess. The world is hungry for a leader. And with all of these wars and pandemics and economic crises and border problems and all of these things in the world, the world is getting ripe. It's getting ready to receive a one world dictator. And so John tells us that there is a time coming where there will be a, a great deceiver and he will uh, be what, they, what he calls an antichrist. We talked about this a few weeks ago that anti can, antichrist can mean against Christ or instead of Christ. And in order to understand this, you know, I really want us to go to this, this level. Listen, we have to go back to understand what does this even mean? Why is the world looking for a leader? What's the, the spiritual and political significance of this Antichrist figure? To, in order to get a good understanding, to grasp this understanding, we have to go back to the book of Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar and the things that happened at that, at that time in the in the nation and the empire and the kingdom of Babylon. And so we're going to read in Daniel chapter 2 and the Nebu the statue dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible says this. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. Verse 27 in chapter 2 of Daniel says, Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven, hallelujah, who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in bed are these. Verse 31. Your majesty looked and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. 
Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace, but the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. Continuing in verse 36, this was the dream, and now we will interpret it to the king. Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you rule over them all. You are that head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything. And as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it. Even as you saw iron mixed with clay, verse 42, as the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. And ending in verse 44, it says, In the time of those kings, that is the end time kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future, and the dream is true. And its interpretation is trustworthy. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you for your written word. I thank you, Father God, that you have not left us stranded to figure things out, but you have given us a roadmap to follow, Lord God. We are your people. And Lord, we, we believe that all of your scripture is inspired and breathed by you. Lord, we believe that godly men, God-fearing men, wrote as you gave them the direction. And so, Lord God, we thank you for this prophetic word. Speak to us, we pray. Holy Spirit, soften our hearts and let us be ready to receive the deposited word. In Jesus' name, amen. What's so interesting about this scripture is that we're looking, this is almost a, hit, a history lesson. But at the time of, of this writing, it was, it was prophetic, it was futuristic. When Daniel was in, in Babylon, the Bible says that he was given, I spoke about this about a month ago, I preached a message about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, and how they were taken from Judah, and they were brought into Babylon as a punishment because of the, the nation of Israel had rebelled against God, and after many, many years of warning them, they, God said, you know what, it's time for me. I love you guys, but it's time for me to punish you guys. And so he sent Nebuchadnezzar to capture Jerusalem and bring the people into Babylon. So the Bible says that at the time, Daniel and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego were, were young men. And they were, you know, they had, we know the story that they didn't take part in the king's delicacies and all of those things. And they were shown to be more wise and had more revelations of things in the spiritual realm. 
And the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of this statue and it troubled him. And he asked all of his magicians and astrologers and all of those people to not just tell him the interpretation of the dream, but to tell him what the dream was and then the interpretation. And nobody could do it. Even Daniel said, this is impossible. Nobody can do that. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. Hallelujah. You see, Daniel didn't take it upon himself to say, I got the answers. It's not about Daniel. It's not about you or I. It's about the God of heaven and earth. And so God gave Daniel the revelation of the dream and the interpretation of the dream. And so this is, again, we're building up the case. We're building up the foundation of understanding of who this Antichrist is is and what he will do what he will do in the days and times in which we're living in and we don't know the bible doesn't tell us who the person is obviously but we can understand where he'll come from what his agenda will be and those types of things and so my hope is to help you understand that the times in which you're living right now is what john what we talked about a few weeks ago we are living in the last hour before jesus christ comes for his people and my hope and my goal is to have you ready for that day when the trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first. And those who have Jesus in their heart will rise as well to meet him in the air. And down here on earth will be an extreme time of judgment. And my hope and my goal is that you listening and watching will benefit from this message and that you will understand from this teaching that there is a time coming that you're going to want to escape and you're going to want to be with God for all eternity. Amen. So if you could put up the uh, the statue and then just uh, leave the, the camera on me. So I'm going to just talk over here about this. OK. So when we look at Daniel, we look at here is the um, the 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 statue of Daniel of Nebuchadnezzar. And over here we see in Daniel chapter 2, we see this, what we just read. And the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about had a golden head, a head of gold. And this gold head, we know that Daniel gave him the interpretation. This represents Nebuchadnezzar and his reign and his empire and his kingdom of Babylon. Now, the wonderful thing about this is all of this is human history. You can go to history.com, you can go to any website, you can get any almanac, any world, uh, you know, anything you want. Go to any book, any history book, and you're going to learn in world history about the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Now, what's interesting is I have here 626 B.C., but we know that it started, the Babylonian Empire started way before that. It goes way before that. But it's called the Neo-Babylonian because it was the New Babylonian Empire. It was at the pinnacle of its power, and it took over Assyria and all of these other places in Mesopotamia. And the Babylonian Empire was at its peak, at its pinnacle around this time. This is when Nebuchadnezzar was in power, and he was the golden head. But Daniel told them that after him, there would come another kingdom. And it'd be, it would be inferior to the Babylonian Empire, meaning it would not conquer as much and do as much as, as the Babylonians would, but they would nevertheless conquer Babylon. And so over here I have the Persian Empire, but technically it was called the Medo-Persian Empire. The, the Medes and the Persians, they came together and they overthrew the Babylonian Empire to become the superpower of the known world at that time. What's interesting about that is that the Medes and Persians represent the center, the center part of this body, which is the left arm and the right arm. And so it took the Medes and the Persians, the left and the right arms, to overthrow the Babylonian Empire. But after the Babylonian Empire, look at over here, 559 B.C. to 331 B.C., the, Persian, the Medes and the Persians were conquering that, that, that uh, Middle Eastern Empire, the Near East and the Far East, until the Greek Hellenistic period. Now, we know from history there was a man called Alexander the Great. And at a very, very young age, this man, he just went through that whole area from, from, uh, from Egypt all the way up to, the, to, to uh, Turkey, Iraq, and, and all around. I mean, he's, the, the Greeks conquered so much land. It was incredible in such a short amount of time. And so, he so the Grecian Empire represents this middle portion of the statue here. And then after that, we know that the Romans came. And the Romans, they 
inherited a lot of the Greek. They, they took a lot of the Greek culture and they, they, uh, they applied it to their own sense of, of, of rule in their empire. And that they represent the, the legs. Now, what's interesting about the legs, kind of just like the Medo-Persians where there was a left arm and a right arm, the Roman Empire was so big, it was stretched so wide and so long over, I mean, from what we now call Europe to the Middle East, down to Egypt, they had a big, big, big empire. Now, the problem with that is that no one ever overthrew the Roman Empire. They were never conquered, but they collapsed through internal corruption. They collapsed because they were spread too thin. There was all kind of power struggles going on and, and attempted coups and actually some uh, successful coups. Uh, the Senate and, the, and, the, and the, um, the emperor, they were always battling. And so there was a lot of things that happened where the Roman Empire actually after Nero burned it down burned down Jerusalem in 70 AD and things just got out of hand, the Roman Empire split between the, e the Western Empire and the Eastern Empire. We know that the Eastern Empire was called the Byzantine Empire. And so the left and right leg of this statue, Nebuchadnezzar's statue, represent the Roman Empire that had split between the West and the East. Now, the, the Western Empire, around 400 in 76 AD had collapsed. We know that it broke up and, you know, they were overtaken by the Franks and, and all kinds of other uh, people of that time, which ended up becoming France and Spain and Portugal and all of those countries in Europe, in Western Europe, that all came from the Western leg of the Roman Empire. Now, the Eastern Empire, the right leg, that actually continued to exist for another thousand years until they were overtaken by the Ottoman Empire. So the Muslims, they had come together with many other people and they overthrew the Western, uh, the Eastern uh, leg of the Roman Empire. So we're going to get into Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel's dream. See, this represents, this statue represents Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And approximately 50 years later, we see Daniel in chapter 7, he had a dream. Now, if you want to go to the other one, you can, you can show them so I can, they can get a good view. So when you see these beasts, this is what Daniel saw in his chapter 7 dream, that the lion with the wings represents Babylon, and the leopards with the wings represented the Medo-Persians, and the bear with the three ribs, that's three ribs in his mouth. And we're going to get to this next time. That represented the Greeks. And then there's this very hideous looking beast at the bottom with these horns. And there's a, a horn with a, a face on it. And we're going to talk about that next time. And we're going to see. So now we can see that these, the modern Roman Empire, which is sometime in the, I believe, in the near future, is a mixture of the original Roman Empire made of, of iron. But it also has clay and mixed with it. And so we know that clay, Daniel talks about it. He says that the clay is mixed with it because it's a mixture of people. So as I explained with the two different legs of and the, and the east and the west, the western empire of the Roman Empire was was just the Franks and, and the you know, Great Britain and all of these all these other countries that are now a mixture of people. And so it's not a, a, a dynasty or an empire like it once was. It's a, weaker, it's a weaker kingdom. And so when will that be? We don't know. But I believe as we look around the world, we can see that this, there's going to be a one world leader. And if you, again, look at, the, at that, that horn on the top of this last beast that has a face on it. And we're going to get into this called the little horn. And then... And I'll show you that I believe that this little horn, which is, will be the Antichrist, he will come from the revived or the modern Roman Empire. And so what do we have to learn? So if you want to go to the map from the, the European, the, the, yep. so here we see Europe, Africa, Asia, and in the middle you see the Western and Eastern Roman Empire. We see that this whole area was taken over by the Romans, but when it split in the middle, Rome in Italy 
was the capital city of the Western Roman Empire. And we know that Constantin Constantinople was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. And so from all of this area, this is what Daniel saw was the beast system. This was the beast, uh, the fourth beast that was the Roman Empire. But because it was split down the middle, that represents the left and the right legs of the statue. And so at some point, like I said, it was never really conquered. It was the Roman Empire at its peak was never conquered by another country, by another empire, another kingdom. And so it will be at some point. And we're going to get into this next time because it's so important. Listen, everything that is pushing us right now in life, the world around us, it's all getting ready. The world is getting ready to receive this one world leader who is going to say he has all of the answers. He has all the answers. And, and again, we're just, getting, we're just diving into the, the very basics of this Antichrist topic because it's very important that people who talk about Antichrist preachers and teachers, and, they, and, and many people don't know, what, what are you talking about? Antichrist, what does that even mean? But there is a one world leader coming, and he comes as a white horse, a shining, a, a, a shining armor and white horse, and everybody's going to believe he's good, but he's going to speak blasphemies against the Most High God. And many people will follow this one world leader. And I believe that this one world, and many Christians, many, many theological scholars and biblical scholars believe that this one world leader, this little horn, will pop up. This fourth beast will pop up from the revised Roman Empire. This will be a person that will claim to have all the answers and many people will follow after him. And so the book of Daniel between Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel's dream, God had given us the answer to what to expect in these last days. You know, it's very interesting. Listen, please listen, okay? Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, he said that the, the dream, he said the dream, this is in Daniel chapter 2, you don't have to go there, Daniel chapter 2, verse 45, the end of that verse, he says, the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. The dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. From a historical point, if, you, we, if we just look back at human history, at world history, the fulfillment of that dream, of the interpretation of that dream, is very clear. It's undeniable, actually. It's undeniable. Go anywhere in the world, and I guarantee you'll find the history of the, of the Babylonians, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire, and the Roman Empires. It existed. You can't, no one can, can deny that. So Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue was a fulfillment of human history. We see it. God told us what would happen, and it happened. But there's this other part, this kingdom of iron mixed with clay that we're still waiting for. And I believe that right now, as we look at the EU, we look at NATO, we're looking at the World Economic Forum, there's so many, so many organizations, world organizations coming together, even the World Health Organization. All of these organizations are coming together. The World Bank, they're all BlackRock. They're all coming down, they're all coming together to form this one world system. What's interesting is that when you see that the, the, the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, and also the Romans, they took over the known world at that time, but they never took over the entire planet. But that system, that, that kingdom, that empire, I believe is formulating right here, right now in 2023, right before our eyes. This is exciting. These are exciting times for us to live. And, you know, the world is looking for answers. 
And I believe that the answers are found in the written word of God. I believe that you and I, just like Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar, that the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Listen, God's word is trustworthy. Matthew chapter 24, the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, do you see this temple and all the beautiful buildings? And Jesus said, I tell you that not one of these stones that you see here will be left standing upon another. And, and 30 some odd years later, in 70 AD, that prophecy came true. God's word and his interpretations are true and trustworthy. Friends, listen. I'm doing this study because there's many deceivers going out right now, being deceived and deceiving others. Deception is rampant. People in this world think that good is evil and evil is good. This is all part of the antichrist system. It's in your schools. It's in your jobs. Look at what people are celebrating in America this month, right now, in the month of June. Taking a whole month to celebrate women cutting their breasts off and, and men cutting off their genitals to be women all in the name of equality, all in the name of choice. and That's not empowering. It's a deception to ruin and destroy humanity. This is all part of the beast system. Listen, I want you to understand this, please. Listen, this is a spiritual battle that is manifesting in the political realm in the whole world. Uganda just passed a law banning homosexuality there are so many things listen what's look what's happening in certain parts of africa look what's happening with this war in ukraine the world listen obviously we see what's happening with iran and and israel and all of the things that are happening over there there's so many things happening in the world right now people don't know what's real news what's fake news listen we, we live in a world of fake news fake food, fake people. We don't know. It's so hard to discern sometimes what's real. Fake religions. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that God's word is true and it's trustworthy. You can trust what God has said. And his word says that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. If you trust in him, if you understand that we're all sinners, we all have rebelled against God. Why? Because the spirit of Antichrist. Did God really say that you would die? Satan has tried to deceive people since the garden to make you think that you can be your own God, that you can live life without being under the authority of of the creator of the universe and it's a lie it's a deception you cannot be god i cannot be god there's only one god and his name is jehovah and jesus christ is his son believe on the lord jesus christ today we're just getting started in this study we're going to go a lot deeper but we're just going through the basics and developing the foundational understanding of who this antichrist is what the beast system is and how you don't want to be here when he comes into power. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's just understanding this. You know, the thief on the cross, Jesus was crucified in between two thieves. One mocked and ridiculed Jesus, and the other said, Don't you know? Have you no fear and shame? Don't you know that what the punishment that we are receiving, we deserved it? We're getting justice to us today for we have done the violations of the law and we deserve this but he is innocent and he said Lord Jesus remember me when you go into your kingdom and Jesus said from this day forward you will be with me in paradise there were two things that the that the thief on the cross did number one he acknowledged that the punishment he was receiving was just he understood that he was a sinner and that the just reward for a sinner is death. Because the Bible says the wages of sin, the payment for sin, the reward for sin, 
Sin meaning rebellion against God is death. And this man knew that. And the second thing he understood was that there's, there could be life after death with Jesus if he just called upon his name. Would you do that today? Would you do that? Would you acknowledge that you have rebelled, just like every human being has, against the God of the universe, and that if you simply acknowledge that and call upon the name of Jesus, that you can be with him in paradise. You can pray in your own way, something similar to this, and just say, Father God, I know I'm a sinner. I rebelled against you, and I know I deserve punishment, but I thank you that you put the punishment on your son Jesus Christ on the cross for me. I receive the finished work of Jesus Christ in my life. I'm a sinner and I want to be saved and, ex and accepted into your family. Receive me now. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. Take away all my sins, all my regrets, all my guilt and shame. Wash it away and fill me with your spirit of peace and grace. And help me to walk with you for the rest of my time on earth. In your name, Jesus. If you prayed that prayer or something like that, listen, it has to be from your heart. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. What I'm talking about, this whole beast system and this antichrist, you can be saved from what's coming. Because it will be terrifying but not for those who put their confidence and trust in Jesus Christ. So God bless you. I'm Josue Rodriguez, 88 Rockdale Avenue, Sundays, 10 a.m., Remnant Fellowship. We're praying for the city of New Bedford. We're praying for is the peace of Israel. We're praying for our nation. And uh, we hope that you'll come see us. If not, God bless you anyway. We love you. We're praying for you. And may the Lord continue to richly bless you. Talk to you soon.